Hi, it's Martin and Arlo. We're in the studio today to make boiled cider rye bread. Okay, so boiled cider rye bread. This is a bread that you've had before many times because it's a recipe from my book. And in this case, we're using 100% organic medium rye which is a new product from King Arthur, which is awesome. And we're using it with this boiled cider. This is from Woods Boiled Cider, and it's a cider house that also does, has a syrup operation, so they make a lot of maple syrup. And then when their syrup operation isn't in use during the fall, they make boiled cider, which is an incredible thing to have around. I like it in vinaigrettes. I like it in sparkling water. You can baste a roasting chicken with it or vegetables. It's a super, um, sort of flexible ingredient for you to have. You can also make it at home by reducing your own cider or cider that you purchase at the store. Uh, and there are instructions for that in the recipe. So, okay, let's do the mix. So, boiled cider rye bread, um, medium rye flour, that's the only flour in this mix is the medium rye flour, right? Mm -hmm. This bread has a pre-ferment. I fed some of the medium rye flour with equal parts by weight flour and water, and then I added some sourdough culture into it, right? Yep. So, so, you know, rye has different qualities than wheat. It's not as stretchy and like rubber band-like, right? Yeah. So you can't knead it in the same way. You don't mix it in the same way. You don't shape it in the same way. It's much more like working with something like maybe Play-Doh or something that doesn't like stretch and bounce back. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have elasticity. Mm. It smells good, right? Yeah. It has a, I mean, it's not like something that you're going to make a candle scent out of, you know? Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> but it smells malty and also like very grassy. Definitely. Anyway, lots of flavor. That's where the flavor is largely coming from in this bread. Mixing 100% rye breads is not unlike mixing a batter bread. There's no kneading per se. So I've got my rice sour in the bowl, right? And then I'm yep. gonna add my water. It's important, especially if you're working on a cool day like we have here today, it's important that you warm the water up. The water I'm using today is well over 100 degrees just to make sure that by the time I add in the flour, which is slightly cool, and the pre-ferment, which is slightly cool, uh, I wanna make sure that everything is a good temperature for fermentation. 100% rye breads generally don't ferment as long as you might ferment a traditional sourdough loaf, you know? Mm -hmm. Like if I'm making sourdough bread, I may ferment it for a few hours. Yeah. This has only 60 minutes of bulk fermentation, six zero minutes. This is not a sourdough bread, but the pre-ferment is sourdough and yeah. the final flavor profile will be slightly acidic. It also has a little bit of yeast in it, so it's not in pure terms like a sourdough bread, right? Yeah. It's using a little bit of yeast just to encourage fermentation. I think of myself as a baker, not a sourdough baker or a yeast baker. I don't think in those buckets. I just think myself as someone who likes to bake, right? Yeah. So using a little bit of yeast, yeast in what could be a sourdough recipe um, feels fine and is okay. All right, so I've got my sourdough culture and the water. I can add my salt, and it's a little bit of yeast. It's not a ton. And then boiled cider. Like I said, you can reduce your own cider to make this, and it's, it's just like intense apple brightness and slight sweetness. It's gonna help the loaf to color, and it will also add some flavor. So I've got those things in, and then I just add the rye all at once. And like I said, rye breads, which are 100% rye flour, and I'm not talking about like a deli rye, which has a higher percentage of flour, like all purpose. Those breads you can knead and handle in a more, you know, tradition, in, in, in a fashion which you're maybe more used to. But this rye bread is gonna act more like a batter bread. Yeah, you can definitely see right now that it's like, you're not going to be able to need that. Yeah, if you try and need that, you're going to have a tough time, right? And you'll see when we get to shaping how things are sort of different. Water is your best friend. When you're working with these doughs like this, which are sticky, um, if you have a little bit of water on your hand, like I'll go over to my 
butter pitcher and I can clean off my spatula. See how if I had a wheat based dough, it, it can hold together, right? But watch this, it just has nothing. But after it ferments for a little bit, it'll gain a little bit more cohesion. And so we're just gonna leave that alone covered for an hour and then we'll be back. All right, so let's divide this dough. So I took the dough's temperature before I started bulk fermentation just to double check that I was in a good healthy range. It was 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about perfect, I think, for rye breads. That's a great temperature for bulk fermentation. The thing is that, is that this room is chilly today. Anthem was just saying it's probably in the low mid-60s, somewhere in there. So if I leave it at room temperature, the temperature of the dough is going to slowly chill and we're going to end up with less fermentation in that hour period of time than we would hope for. So the moral of the story is that you need to put the dough in a nice warm place to rise, right? Yeah. If you don't have a nice warm place, find one or extend fermentation some. You may even need to go to an hour and a half or two hours if your house is cool. Whereas in the summer, you might be able to shorten that hour down to like 45 minutes or even 30 minutes if you're someplace really warm. In order to work with that today though, I did use a proofing box and this is uh, a nice thing to have. I'm not real big on tools and you can see I do everything I can by hand with as few tools as possible. This is one that I don't have at home but I might uh, like to have at home. So anyway, I'm using the Broad & Taylor today to proof this dough just because it helps keep things, keep things warm. Okay, so let's look at this. This rye dough will not rise that noticeably during bulk. I mean, you can see that it's risen a little bit, right? Yeah, definitely. It's, it's a little bit puffy, but it's not gonna be like some big bowl of dough that's all gassy, like yeah. you might see with like a wheat-based dough. So rye just doesn't do that, it's denser. So don't look for something that's super big and puffy. It just should feel a little bit active and that's all we're really looking for. So I'm gonna dump this out and divide it. There are a couple different ways to work with a rye bread like this. You can work on a moist countertop, or, um, and that's the way that a lot of people like to do it. But you can also work with flour, that's fine. I, I kind of am used to working with flour, so I'm gonna use uh, a floured surface. You may see in the instructions that some people like to work on a moist surface. It doesn't matter, either way. Okay, so dump the dough out. You can see that it's active. You can see how it's full of small bubbles, right? Yeah, definitely. So I'm gonna divide it into two pieces. This makes two loaves. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit of flour on top so that my scraper doesn't stick. And then just kind of find the middle. And they're about 800 grams, right around 800 grams. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, shaping this, this doesn't shape like a wheat bread, right? Yeah. I keep saying that. Rye handles differently, just to sort of manage your expectations around what this is going to do. So, shaping is a very gentle process. You're not going to be able to really press your hands in there. You're more just sort of working on the outside of the loaf, right? Yeah. So watch what I do here. On a very lightly floured surface, I'm just going to sort of fold into the middle and it's degassing as I go. And if you find yourself sticking a little bit, make sure you, you know, just keep an eye out for that. So I'm going to let you do it in just a second. Let me finish this one and then we'll go. Okay. Kind of get a little bit more flour. This dough is a, it's a little bit sticky. So I'm just making my way around the outside. Once I have sort of my pieces folded together like that, all I'm gonna do is turn it over and just give it a little bit of rounding. And it's not like I would do with a normal wheat yeah. loaf. Again, you know, I'm gonna stop saying that at some point, but I just want people to really know. Okay, that's it, done. That's all you have to do. Okay. So I'm gonna set that aside for a second and get a little bit of flour on your hands. Just sort of pat your hands on there and then go for it. So? Yeah, gently, yep, 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 just very gently. Coming up into the center. This is so weird. So weird, it's like right? It's paste. Yeah, it is. It's like trying to shape a quick bread a little bit. 
But all that moisture, we need all that moisture. It's going to help the loaf to keep active and it's also going to expand some during baking. So grab that one piece there and then fold it in and then you're good to turn it over. Yep, that's good. Now turn it over and then with the sides, yeah, like this. See how I'm doing there? Yep, yep. Sticking a little bit. If it's sticking a little bit, just well, you're right to do that. So pick it up. Oh, you got a fair amount there. Here. Like that. And get it on a little bit of flour and yep. then you're just going to go like that. That's good. You're done. So then we're going to put it into some banneton. I have these banetons and I already dust them, dusted them with a little bit of uh, rye flour. You always want to dust with a flour that represents what's used in the loaf. So you don't necessarily want to use white flour on the yeah. outside because uh -huh. it'll look weird in contrast to this interior color, which is, which is rye, right? So, yeah. so I always use, so if I'm going to dust a basket and I'm making a rye loaf, I always put rye on the, for uh, dusting flour. So these baskets have already been dusted. I'm just adding a little bit more, but come here, Anthem, and look how, can you see how this basket has pretty good coverage? You don't want it to be caked on there, but you want it to be covered well enough so that this won't stick. Okay, and then these go in seam side up, right? So that's the bottom of the loaf, and we put them, because when we load them, we're gonna turn them back out, and that's gonna be the top, right? Yeah. So this is the top of your loaf right here. Now I'm gonna invert it into the basket like that. Okay, so those are gonna go back into the little proof box yeah. for 30 minutes, right? So these are gonna go back into the proof box for 30 minutes, and then we're gonna turn them out onto parchment, and we're gonna let them sit for about 15. We're gonna watch some cracks form, and then we'll put them into the oven. So they've had their half an hour after shaping and I kept them in a warm place. In this case, I've got them in this proofing box, which is nice. If you're in a cold house and you don't have that situation, you might give it a little bit more time. It may take, you know, 45 minutes or may even take an hour or something. So anyway, these are proofing and remember that the seam side is up. So when I'm going to turn them out onto here, right? So yep. I just turn it into my hand and let it roll out and then gently transfer them. We can see these rings on it a you can little bit. See what's, you can see like where it's going to open up, right? Yeah, so as soon, almost as soon as I place it. You can see these cracks kind of yeah. forming. And at this point, I want to be really gentle, you know? Proofed bread, or bread which is about to go into the oven, is very fragile. So I'm being very gentle with it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not digging my fingers into it. I'm working with my hands sort of as paddles, right? We've yep. had that discussion. Yeah, okay. Yes. So, do you see how these cracks are already sort of forming anthem? Come in and look at this just a little bit. See these cracks which are opening? So we're gonna come back in 15 minutes. I'm gonna set a 15 minute timer, or you are, and um, we'll come back and we'll see that these cracks will be much more exaggerated. Right. Okay, so let's load. Come in here and look at these. It's been about 15 minutes, and you can see how these are cracking really beautifully, and that's exactly what we want. The reason that happens is that rye doesn't have much extensibility. It doesn't have that real rubber band quality that we get with yeah. wheat flour, right? So it just doesn't stretch, it just breaks. So I've got my oven preheated, I've got some water, I have a glove, and I have a towel to protect the window. When I pour the water in, I wanna be careful I don't splatter it on the window. They could probably take it, but just in case, right? Safety first. Yes, that. No don't break the oven. Don't break the King Arthur Studio oven. <laughs> that wouldn't be good. <laughs> It'd be bad. You and I have to find something else to do. Okay. Yeah. So, those are in. And I'm using two cast irons right now. Um, rye bread likes a lot of steam, and so I'm sort of doubling up a little bit. I have this oven set for 500 because I know that 500 will basically give me 450 and so it's baking at 450. I'm going to keep an eye on it though and I might turn it down by say 20 degrees or so after about 20 minutes. So I might turn it down a little bit. I'm just keeping an eye on the oven. Your oven's different. Our oven at home is different. The oven across the street is different. Everybody's oven is different. That's where some of the skill and some of the experience comes in. Okay, so we'll come back in about 
40, 45 minutes and we should have some bread. Okay, so our loaves are out and they've cooled a little bit. Listen, rye bread has to cool more than any other type of bread, especially when you get into the high percentage rye breads. It should really be back down to room temperature to make sure that it will cut well, okay? Otherwise, it might be a little bit gummy. It's like if you roast a chicken, you wanna let it rest a little bit after it comes out of the oven before you just slice into it or all the juice sort of runs out, right? So these breads, these rye breads especially, are good. In fact, some people will say, wait for 24 hours. I have never waited for 24 hours. <laughs> but we did let them cool a little bit before we sliced them. So come in here, Anthem, and let's talk about this bread a little bit. So the color is really good, right? Mm -hmm. I think the color is really nice. It's, um, it's dark, but that's flavor. It's really a lot of flavor. This is a dense loaf, you know? It should be, you know, the structure should be kind of like that. It's a little dusty where I had it sitting on that one, but you know, the structure is not super open. Okay, that's just the nature of these high percentage rye breads. They're not gonna have a real wild crumb. Rye is strongly flavored, right? Rye is a strongly flavored bread. This has no caraway in it. Often when people think of rye bread, they think of caraway. This has no caraway in it, but it's strongly flavored. It's a little bit sour, which is nice. But as you eat it, you wanna think about those flavors and pair it with things which will go well. So I have some strong flavors here. I've got, I've made some little open-faced sandwiches so I put Pomeroy mustard or whole grain mustard, and then I've got a thin piece of pork that I roasted on our wood stove, uh, a piece of Swiss cheese, some fresh onion, and a little bit of microgreens. And then um, what's really good is I can take some of this boiled cider and just use that as a little bit of a drizzle, and it will sort of get it a little bit of moisture, it'll get a, give it a little bit of moisture, but also a little bit of sweetness and mm -hmm. a little bit of acidity should be really good. So try these rye breads. I think you're gonna enjoy them. Um, look for unique flavor combinations after you bake it and put it together. I hope that everyone out there is well. Thank you, Anthem, for helping us out today. And thanks, Arlo. It's good to yes, see you. Nice to have you in the studio. Cheers. Mm. Hard to eat, right? <laughs> Just the butter. Tastes a little bit of acidity, but you also get the creaminess and the sweetness of the butter. How's that? It's amazing. Also, this bread smells so good. It smells crazy good, right? Awesome. Thank you and cheers.